Jose Montero, and I am the Chief Financial Officer uh, of Copa Airlines and Copa Holdings. We are an airline uh, based in Panama City, Panama. I'm an Embry-Riddle graduate. I graduated in 1989 with a, a bachelor's in aeronautical studies. And um, I then started working here at Copa uh, many years ago. And in the middle part of my career, I uh, got a, an MBA, an executive MBA, from the Johnson Graduate School of Management at Cornell University. Now, a lot of meetings, uh, you know, in, the, in this pandemic world with uh, these uh, um, Zoom and Teams meetings, it is usually back to back. But I think that the beauty of my job is that I get to uh, meet with a lot of different people from both uh, inside the company and also from outside of the company. So I, I, our company is a, it trades in the New York Stock Exchange. So therefore, uh, as part of my job, I get to represent the company uh, with investors. I also uh, do quite a bit with uh, financial institutions, with banks, etc. So uh, that, that's really a great part of my job is, is uh, meeting with, with people and, and solving problems. Uh, internally, there's quite a bit of work as well, not just in finance, but also uh, in the operational part of the business and in, in the commercial part of the business. So there's a lot of working together uh, within our company and, and that's good. I'm a, the only thing I would say is that I'm getting uh, somewhat tired of, of the uh, video remote uh, life, uh, you know, it's, I think, important to get to see people, uh, get to meet people in, in real life. And, and that's something that, that is truly important. And actually, that's one of those uh, great contributions that our industry uh, has to society is getting people together. And that's, that's really critical and, and important. It's something that we've learned throughout this last year that, that we really miss. The best part of my job, I think, is when, as a team, we work together uh, to achieve a goal, you know, solving a problem or, or seeing a situation that, that is uh, difficult uh, for the company and, and just just uh, uh, getting that, getting through that, it's, it's uh, very good and uh, very rewarding. The other area that I really enjoy in my job is, is getting to mentor other people. I, I really enjoy uh, having people progress or seeing people progress through their careers. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the most rewarding things that you uh, might get. When, when I started working at Copa, what I really liked was uh, just being around airplanes. Uh, yeah, for my entire life, I've, I've loved airplanes quite a bit. Uh, but now I guess that it's more about the people and the aircraft. Um, and the things that I don't like, uh, there are no job is perfect. Every every job has its sort of uh, uh, difficult uh, moments, and there's a subset of meetings that we have that are that might not be necessary, 100% necessary. There are people that sometimes call for meetings that um, maybe they, they have too many people in the room, or uh, some other participants in the meeting uh, you know shouldn't really need to be there, and so uh, you know sort of these long. Uh, protracted uh, meetings that are that are that are complex and become morally complex is something that I, I that sometimes frustrates me. But those are few and far between. The reality is that the majority of my job is uh, very rewarding. Very very important and good question. And I think that when I speak to people who are younger than I am. I, I usually tell them that. That you know, you you don't. It's very unusual for somebody to to um, get to a, a top position uh, quickly. It takes time, and it takes experience, and it takes uh, making mistakes. You know, a lot of people don't don't tell you that, but uh, making mistakes is part of uh, growing up as, as a professional as well. So, actually, my as I mentioned earlier, my background is purely in. in aeronautics and I, I really like aviation quite a bit. I actually wanted to be a pilot uh, when I was at Verdun and I couldn't because my eyesight, my eyesight is uh, very poor in one of my eyes. Um, and so when I came here, uh, our company was very small. Uh, you know, Panama is a, it's a relatively small country, so uh, 
an airline from Panama is meant to be small. Uh, but I, I found a company that was growing and, and that needed uh, a young talent to to help it just formalize uh, manuals, documentation. So I started uh, working in our flight operations uh, area, uh, just writing manuals and, and preparing documentation, doing a lot of sort of flight operations engineering, a lot of flight dispatch uh, work. I, I also had my, my aircraft dispatcher certificate that I had uh, received while I was at, at, at Riddle. And, um, and, and so I progressed from then, uh, I worked a lot with our pilot group, worked with uh, regulators in, in making, uh, introducing new aircraft types and, and other sort of activities that we did back then. And then uh, after uh, one of my, my bosses that I had at the time, uh, he, he told me that he, he suggested that I should try to get more of a business uh, uh, training and, and so I, I, that's the reason why I selected and started uh, pursuing my MBA, which is when I was around 30 some years old or in my early 30s. And once I finished that, um, I position as a uh, as the head of our network planning team or working uh, with our network planning team. And that was really a great experience because I, uh, Working in flat ops in an airline is, is very important. I actually built our, our system operations control center um, back in, in the late 90s. But but uh, going to the network planning part of, of the business is is um, is truly uh, a sort of career changing. When you take a look at why is it that you need to get X number of frequencies into this market or what aircraft type, etc. So quite a bit of analysis that we did there and developed the hub. Over uh, several years, I spent uh, uh, nine years in planning. I actually, had spent eleven years in flight ops and nine years in planning. And and on flight ops allowed me to to learn quite a bit about the business. And my predecessor as uh, CFO uh, decided to retire, and and I gained this position basically, I think, because of my experience in, in knowing the company very well, understanding how is it that we could. Uh, maintain our cost low and reduce our costs even further. And, and that with the combination of, of the training that I got at, at Riddle and, and later on uh, during my MBA, I think uh, uh, made, made the transition into finance without necessarily being a finance person back then uh, possible. That's probably the most challenging part of, of my job is, is precisely finding that balance. <laughs> Um, it's not easy. And I don't think that there are many uh, rewarding or, or high responsibility jobs that, that don't uh, have this sort of uh, challenge between your, what you do in your personal life and, and your work life. The fact is that it never stops. <laughs> your, your work life never stops. It isn't a nine to five type of, type of situation. You Every weekend you're, you're there, you need to be present, you need to make decisions, you need to uh, study ahead, uh, communicate. Uh, you, you cannot just simply disconnect and, and say, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do anything uh, this Saturday. You have to uh, be there and start thinking. It never goes away. So it's 24 seven, even though it's an administrative job. It, the reality is that, that in today's world, there are um, uh, needs and requirements at every moment of the day. Uh, but I do spend time with my family. I have a beautiful wife and two children who are uh, 11 and nine years old. So I really try to spend as much time as I can with them. Uh, and uh, this is actually, that's one of the benefits of the pandemic. The fact that I've been working from home has allowed me to spend more time with them, lunch with them, dinner, etc. So I, it's I spend some some quality time with them, but it is uh, there's always a challenge. It is, it is you you never reach sort of this perfect balance between work and and, and your personal life in these situations. Study and you know get get. I think your degree, it's, it's critical. I'm a big believer in, in high quality uh, collegiate education. And then once you enter the work uh, space, it's it, try to learn as much as you can. Uh, you know, you, yeah, you got a, a, a diploma that says that, that you're, you know, you know something about a particular subject matter, 
but you should, uh, once you get your, your job, try to learn as much as you can from those around you. Uh, and then once you uh, get into a position of responsibility and you start uh, hiring people or mentoring people, try to surround yourself with the best. Uh, and also try to reach out to, to others to, for them to, to teach you as much as you can and be humble. I think it's being a team player, uh, learning and being humble are the key things. And then finally, you have to also be motivated by what you do. I don't, I don't think that, you know, of course, we all need to pay our bills and, and you know, try to reach financial security and, and provide for our families. But you also want to be happy at what you do. And I think there's nothing more frustrating than being in a, in a sort of job that, that you don't like or doing something that you don't want. You have to find that that motivates you almost to a point of wanting to show up to work without necessarily thinking about getting paid. Uh, you know, if this were almost if, if you were to consider if this were to be your hobby, we would continue doing it. And, and you know, I think with, with that, you, you find ways in which you can stick with something. It is not easy because as time passes, you have good days, bad days. But uh, the fact is that if you find something that you like, you continue learning, you work a, a, as a team member, it's critical. Team, team work is, is really critical and, and uh, are humble, uh, good things will come your way.